switch to a grain-free diet and it may be improving. Now, that brings up an interesting um, an interesting point. And I guess it kind of goes back to what I was talking about briefly when I said what my topic of the day, watch, what day was, which was um, formulating a plan that works to, to cure your dog of their skin allergies or to manage them successfully, I should say. Um, and that is that when there is a problem, when your dog has a problem, in this case, it's allergic skin disease, they're itching, maybe they've got some lesions, whatever it happens to be. Uh, we recognize that we want to do something to help them. We want to, we want to, uh, we want them to get better. We want them to be happy. We want them to be comfortable. We want them to be itch free. Uh, and so we make a change. Now, in a lot of our chronic diseases, and by that, I mean our long term diseases that are with our dogs for a long period of time they have a waxing and waning um, profile. So they will get a little bit worse, they'll get a little bit better, they'll get a little bit worse and get a little bit better. Um, when we tend to take action is when they are at their worst. And that's just our nature. I mean, you know, with yourself, it's, you know, you've, you, you deal with a pro problem yourself. It cut, you know, it's a little bit minor to start with. You go, well, I'll just wait and see how it goes um, before I go to the doctor because I don't think it's anything important. Um, it will get worse and worse and worse and it will reach a point where you go right i've had enough i'm going to go to the doctor now in a lot of our conditions skin disease arthritis um to name but a few they were going to get better anyway because they were at the peak of their severity and the natural progression of the disease is that most of them were going to improve albeit slightly um to a greater or lesser degree um and so we it, it's easy for us to to give something um and, and assume that because your dog improved it was because of that thing that you gave. That's again, only natural. It's part of our human nature to look for patterns. Um, and you know, that's a natural assumption to make. Um, this is where following the train of evidence is really important. And if there's evidence that shows that things don't make a difference, um, then that is far superior to our personal opinion and, and even our experiences because there are various different pitfalls to avoid uh, to, that we can fall into. And that, that's one of them. That one's called regression to the mean. The other one is the placebo effect and the placebo effect um, you'll probably be aware is uh, the beneficial effect that a body gets because of a belief that something is going to work and that benefit that occurs has no relation to the actual substance that is given so we give a sugar pill we believe it's going to make our headache better and our headache goes away so the mind is a powerful thing now our pets can't get the placebo effect because they don't know that we're making a change we're giving a treatment we've started a supplement we've changed their diet um all with the aim of improving their itch improving their skin condition they don't know that so they can't get the placebo effect but we can get something called caregiver placebo which is where we are so invested in our pets we want them to get better we want to see an improvement and so we see an improvement even though there isn't one actually present. And that is a very powerful effect. It's something that we all suffer from. So pet parents, veterinarians as well are just as guilty. There's been um, good evidence with arthritic dogs that um, vets um, were actually a little bit worse, although that wasn't statistically different, but vets were a little bit worse than um, pet parents with over, uh, over emphasizing uh, an improvement, even when there wasn't one to see, and that was determined by various different methods. So it's, it's very, very interesting. But there's a whole load of different reasons why we can, um, our mind can trick us effectively. So why is that relevant to Julia's question? Well, switch to a grain-free diet and it may be improving. Um, so grain-free diet, it's a very popular um, fad at the moment. I know a lot of people will claim that grains are bad for dogs. Um, I don't believe that at all. Um, I think grains, um, especially whole grains, can provide um, a really good source of vitamins and minerals that are really good for life. And I think we need to be thinking about feeding um, nutrients, not ingredients. Um, Grain-free, now there's been a scare with grain-free about um, uh, causing heart problems in dogs. Now that's not all grain-free diets by any stretch. That's that's diets that are um, rich in peas, lentils, and um, sweet potato. So that's a very specific subset of diets. Not all of them were grain-free, grain -free, but if diets were rich in that, then that was that, that, that's what seemed to be the problem. So certainly not against all grain-free diets, but I think most of the grain-free movement is marketing that has built on um, kind of the human um, fad for removing grains and, and demonizing grains as well. So um, 
yeah, that's kind of why I mentioned that. And so how that would impact your dog's elbows um, is questionable. So wouldn't like to say it's impossible, but I spoke yesterday or the day before about how grains actually, when it comes to food allergy, um, grains are not the primary culprit. Culprit wheat is um, number four on the list, um, quite low down, and then other grains are much lower than that, but it tends to be to an individual grain rather than to all grains. Is your dog's allergies not improving despite your efforts? Managing allergies can be difficult at times, especially without a proper diagnosis. If your dog is experiencing these uncomfortable symptoms, it may be time to consider a different approach. In this video, Dr. Alex Avery will discuss the possible causes and treatments for dog allergies that won't go away.